Hi guys, welcome back to another Blender 2.81 tutorial. Today we're going to be making the dock you see here. So let's get right into it. We'll open a new Blender file. And so to start off, we're going to be adding a cylinder. And we will change this to 16. And now we're going to hit the seven key. That's going to take us to the top view. And now we're going to go into edit mode by pressing tab. And we're just going to scale this down to about something like that. Uh, it's about four blocks wide. And then we're going to go up into here and we're going to turn this little magnet on and that's going to, and turn on absolute grid snap. And that's going to let us um, snap our objects to the grid. So it just makes life a bit easier. So now we're going to place one of these and pressing shift D to get another one. And we're just going to paste it, space them um, two apart. And we'll probably have five. So I'm just pressing shift D and then moving around and clicking to confirm. And then we're just going to press A to select all, shift D again, and we're going to bring this to the right. So now we've got our pillars, but they're kind of short, so we're going to make them a bit bigger. Pressing A again, and then S and Z to scale it. Something like that should do. And now we're going to add um, some beams in between these. So we're going to double tap A to deselect and then we're going to press shift A and add a cube in. Now we're just going to scale this cube down by pressing S so it's small and we can press the um, full stop key and that's going to zoom us in and then we're just going to make it a bit skinnier by pressing S Y and that's going to give it a shape like that and maybe we're S Z to make it a bit taller. And now we can just press S and X, scale it along the X axis to its inside. And now we can just copy that over to all of these. So we're just pressing Shift D and it should just snap into place. And we can press um, Z and wireframe and seven just to check that everything looks good and is in line. So far, so good. Now we're going to add um, some beams just going across um, the length of our dock. So we'll just copy paste one of these, pressing Z again to go into wireframe and um, just you can click L over any, um, any vertice and it'll select the whole object. So I'm just hitting L and we'll select it. And now we're going to press Shift D and that's going to make a copy of it. And now we can just press G and Z to move it up on the X axis holding control. Um, so it doesn't snap to the grid. And we'll just put it right on top of there. And then R Z 90 and that's going to rotate it 90 degrees on the Z axis. Now we can hit seven go into the top view. And we're just going to position that like so. Um, hold press C to select and just move that till it's in line with there, just so it snaps to the grid. And then we're going to zoom out a little bit, um, press C, G to our G, Y, so that we move it only along the Y axis. And now we're going to press L and we're just going to press shift D again and move that over. So now we have two of these beams and they've moved a bit down. So we'll just press G and Z and hold control so it doesn't snap to the grid. And we can hit Z and go into wireframe and just scale these down a bit. Um, that should be good. So now we've got the frame and now we just need our um, planks going across. So for that, we're just going to add in another cube and we're going to scale it on the Z axis by pressing SZ until it's quite thin. And then we're going to go into top view 
hit S and X to scale it to, so that it's narrower than the um, beams going up. And then we're just going to hit S and Y. And we're going to make sure that it's four just less than four blocks, like so. As you can see, one, two, three, four. Slightly less than four because that will then they will all fit. So now we can just um, hit G and move that all the way up to the front. And now we're going to press Shift D and just copy it all along and it should just snap in even increments. And leaving a small gap over here if it's narrower. If you make it bigger then it will just overlap and we don't want that, we actually want the gaps. And we're just going to keep going all the way down. Just hitting Shift D to copy them and then moving it down off my mouse. And there we go, that's the basic shape, but as you can see, they've all gone underneath. So we'll just go into wireframe and we'll just box select all of these. I hit um, the what three key to go into side view and then B for box select and just drag it over. And then we're just going to go back into solid view by pressing Z and we're going to hit G and hold control. And then we're just going to go into front view by pressing one and then G Z and hold control just so that it doesn't snap. And then we'll just put it right over there. And we can actually make these a bit. We'll select these and just make the whole thing shorter. Something like that, maybe. And maybe move this whole thing down, just circle select it, GZ. There we go. So now that's the basic dock, and we'll put a ramp on here just so that if you put it, use it as a game asset or something, and you want it to connect to a beach, then it will do that without having just a big gap over here. So to do that, we'll just go and to face select over here and just holding shift and select both of these faces. And now we're going to go into wireframe by pressing Z, press shift D, um, hold and then G, Y, kind of move along, along the Y axis. And then we're just going to extrude it by hitting E. And then we can just bring that down, maybe rotate it. And now we have our ramp shape. And now we just need to add some slats. So we'll hit L uh, while we're holding over this. And then we'll just press Shift D and we'll just add all these. And we'll hit one or oh, three to go into side view. Select all of these by hitting L. And then we're going to go back into vertice. We're going to click on this vertice and then click it again. So that this is our active. And then we're going to go to here and hit active element. And then we're just going to G Z to scale, uh, move this up along the Z axis so that it's just touching over there. And we're going to have a look at this end and hit R and we're just going to rotate it till it touches. You can hit R and then shift to do finer movements and then we'll just leave it right there. So now we have our ramp. Um, you can see these extend a bit, so we might just move that back. Uh, we're going to go into wireframe and then hit C and just press shift V. That's going to bring it, slide those vertices up. And now it doesn't overlap. And so far that's looking pretty good. Um, just one last step and that is um, randomizing the whole thing a bit because it looks very even right now. And we don't want that. So what we're going to do for this is go up here, turn this off. We don't need that anymore. We're going to hit proportional editing and then go down to random. And now we can go into wireframe mode and we can just click on some of these. And when we move it, it'll move things around randomly. So we can just kind of move a few of these planks just a bit. So that it looks a bit more random. And we're just going to do that for a few of them. Don't need to get too carried away. It just gives it the effect of not looking too artificial. 
you don't really want to move these around too much. So just change some of these planks. Just hitting G while having this proportional editing on to move them around. And we can use scroll wheel to change the size. But I think that looks pretty good. So now what we can do is change some of the height of these because it's unlikely that in real life they'd all be the same. So we can just turn this off now and just GZ move some of them up and down a bit. Just make it a little bit more random. Just hitting GZ to only affect the Z axis. And there we go, it looks a little bit more random. Um, you can actually hardly see it, but um, when you change, when you look at it like it was previously, you can notice the difference. Just makes it look that much, a little bit more realistic. Um, and now we can smooth it by hitting space. And then we can just search up shade smooth. And now we can go into this little green triangle here, normals, auto smooth and you'll see it makes the edges look clean again. If you turn it off, it kind of looks a bit weird. And now we'll just do one final thing to make it look a little bit better. You don't have to do this if you're putting it into a low poly game or something. And that is going into modifiers and adding a bevel. This will make it look a little bit more realistic since no edges are 100% sharp in real life. So we'll in here we'll go to limit method angle and we'll just leave it at 30 degrees. And then you can see these bevels are way too big. So we'll just slide this down, holding shift to make small um, changes. And we'll just change it to sort of affecting only a small portion of it. And then we can change the segments to about three or four. Four seems to look good. And there we have our dock. So now we can texture it. And we'll do this by clicking, starting by clicking here, and we'll click new, new material. And now we're just gonna drag this window up. You should have a timeline here. If you don't, you can just go to, oh, where is it? Shading, and they'll add all that for you, but we'll just add it ourselves. So we're gonna come into the top left-hand corner, click on this, and we're gonna change it to shader editor. Um, and for those of you who don't know how to add a new window, you just go to the corner till it has this little cursor and then drag up and we'll add in a new one. And then you can change the type of window by just clicking on this and you can change it to any one of these. So we'll change this to a UV editor. So now what we're going to do is add our texture images. We're going to find these at textures.com. So we'll search up textures.com. And then we'll go to, and we'll just search up wood. And this is the one I used, but you can use whichever one you think looks nice. So what we'll do is we'll click on this, come down here and we'll just download the um, 124 by 124. And you can download these if you just make an account, that's pretty easy. And we only need the um, normal map, roughness and albedo. You can add an AO, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. So we'll just use those three just to keep the keep it all simple. So coming back in here, once we've downloaded those to your location, we'll just add, we'll shift A to add, and we'll add three image textures. And then we can, well, we'll just add one and then just duplicate it, shift D. And then shift A again, go to search, and we can just search up normal go to normal map and now we'll connect the color to the color normal to normal 
and we'll change this. Uh, we can first have to add the image before we can change it. And we'll connect roughness to roughness and color to color. And now we're going to hit open and wherever you saved it, I just saved it on my desktop. So we can just um, hold shift and bring all of these in. We don't want the highest one. Holding control to select them, select multiple. And we'll just bring in those three. And now we go to this little drop down here and we will add in the albedo for the base color. Come down here and drop down. So it's the roughness and we're going to change this to non-color. And then for the normal map, we will select the normal one. Change this to non-color as well. And now if we go into the render preview, you can see that it's kind of unwrapped it kind of weirdly. So we need to fix that by unwrapping it properly. So we'll just come down here and open the albedo one. And if we go into edit mode and press A and select all, you can see it over here. And this is not a good unwrap at all. So we can just easily hit smart UV project and it'll lay it all out. But if you look over here, it's kind of stretched it. So we can just increase the scale of this so that the wood has a more realistic size. Um, this is not the absolute best way of doing this. In in a perfect world, you'd have a separate texture for the tops because as you can see, it's like a cross grain and that doesn't make sense. You want an end grain for that. Um, but for the purpose of this, it shouldn't matter too much. And you can probably increase the strength of this a little bit just to make it pop a little bit more since we don't have any ambient inclusion maps or anything. And there we have it. We have our simple dock and it didn't take too long to make. Um, you can always uh, make this look a bit more damaged or something or add um, like algae or mold or something to make it look a little bit more realistic. But um, this is just a simple tutorial just to introduce some of you to textures and making game assets. So you can see the triangles here are not too high, 13,000, and without the bevel modifier, it's even less. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.